We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creator. We are here. World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, Go to worldfinancialgroup.com. Hello, 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 and welcome once again to another fantastic Tuesday where I always make it a purpose of being here so that we can give you what you need, which is financial literacy, which is an opportunity to take your financial skills, abilities, concepts, methods, whatever it is that you're doing, and level it up again. Bring it up to that next understanding of where you should be if you're not already there. If you are already there, this is just a refresher course for you. This is just a way for you to fine tune, hone in on those already perfected skills. And now again, just level it up. Just bring it up. See, Eric, I got to give you a shout out for that one. Level up, everybody. Level that financial education up. And my name is Tyrone Glover, and I am the CEO of Leverage Credit Recovery. We are hosting this show today on Soul City Live. If you are have already made the time, thank you very much. And please, real quick, just go out and on your device, Send out one invite to somebody that you care about. Send out one invite to somebody that you believe could use this information. Send out one invite to someone that you know is in dire need and could definitely benefit from this. So with that being said, go ahead. I'm getting ready to do mine too. I'm sending mine out, sending that love out. Again, folks, This is important. If you're not talking about financial literacy, if you're not making it part of your day-to-day understanding, you're leaving something on the table. And I don't think in this particular time frame, we should be running around leaving things on the table. I hope you all are paying attention. I hope you all are listening to what I'm saying. We have no time to be leaving valuable resources on the table. It's overdue time. For us to get this financial literacy stuff in play, to get this financial literacy stuff in order, to make sure that whatever it is that we need, we are satisfying those needs. Financial literacy is a need. And today we're going to be breaking it down for our parents who have K through 12 students. All right. This is so important. We're breaking it down for those parents who have K through 12 students how financial literacy could improve K through 12 education. It's just that simple. We talk about adults all the time because that's our primary focus. But now today we're going to put that primary focus to the side and we're going to focus on our littles because our littles need it. I, as a teacher, know good and well that it's challenging when we go through these school curriculums and we, again, Nothing wrong with what and how they are, but those curriculums need to be addressed so that they are covering these important issues that our children are struggling with. All right. We're going to keep math. That's not going away. We're going to keep ELA. That's not going away. But as far as that science, do we really need it? Could that be cut down to maybe once in that K through 12 setting? Now, again, let's focus on what I'm saying here. K through 12. Okay, so once you get to ninth 
through 12. Yes, maybe science could be reintroduced because that might be something that these kids might be interested in. But in that earlier stage, K through 12, is it really necessary? Could we possibly throw in some financial literacy? Could we throw in some social skills? Are there things that we could put in place of, say, history? Since critical race theory is becoming a issue in schools, since certain reading material is becoming such an issue in school, could we replace that with some of these real skill sets that our children could benefit from almost literally by day one? So as always, thank you for making the time. I know that it is very challenging for individuals to get to the um, computer screens, but those of you who do, it's always a pleasure. It's always a joy to see those comments pop up. It's always a joy to look back later on and see how many people have viewed and watched the show. So continue to keep Hopefully you're learning. If you're not, please let me know by dropping those comments in. If you got any requests for particular shows, any understandings that you have or that we have not been able to cover, please let us know. Email us through the website. Send it through Soul City at Soul City Network on Facebook. Or again, you at the end of the show will be put producing and putting up all of our contact information. So let's jump on into it. Leverage credit recovery, how financial literacy could improve K through 12 education. A look at the importance of teaching our K through 12 financial literacy. Now we talked about financial literacy. Financial literacy is a difference of understandings through a variety of different financial products. Okay, so it's a lot. It's a lot of information. And we don't want to sit here and try to give you every bit of it. No, we know that's not going to be possible. What we want to do is we want to highlight some of those key areas in which it could help you help your children. And equally, it would help you too. If you were to have these conversations at the dinner table, if you were to have these conversations when you're on the road trips, if you were to have these conversations again, whenever it is feasible. Let your kids understand how mommy and daddy make their money. Let your kids know how guardians or grandma or whoever the individuals that might be overseeing or protecting our youth, let them know how money is being made in that household. Let them know that it's important to manage your finances and your resources properly. Because if you don't, you're going to find out that life is going to be a lot more challenging because of the fact that we have not done our due diligence, which is making sure that we are smart, savvy, wise, brilliant when it comes to our money, when it comes to our resources. And at the very end of this, I'm going to be introducing some financial products that are designed specifically for youth K through 12. All right. So the government, the new government emphasis on including financial literacy in K through 12 education demonstrates a rising recognition of the benefits researchers have already demonstrated. So the government is now backing us. They know that there has been a problem in that K through 12 area. So the government said, what can we do? And the government, again, has been researching it. They've been looking at the problem. But as I've said many, and many, and many, and many a times, and I'm going to constantly keep saying it, there's no more research that need be done. There's no more evaluating that need be done. What we need to do is find people like myself who can step right into the academic setting and already be successful on day one. Individuals like myself who already have the baseline, the foundation, the understanding to go into these academic settings and enhance these kids' knowledge about money on day one and keep them engaged, keep them connected, keep them wanting more. I do a Glover Bucks process and it's real simple. I just created some Glover Bucks, which I put my emojis this month or last month. I put all the students' emojis. They were super excited about it. This month, starting next week, we're going to be putting all the teachers' emojis on the Glover Bucks. But what's important is that it helps kids understand, oh my goodness, I can earn money just like mom and dad earns money for doing certain tasks wow really oh my god how do i do that doing ixl 
doing iReady, doing all of the things that we put into Teams, doing all of the things that we put into Clever, keeping yourself abreast to anything that you want to know by putting it into the request line or putting it into the suggestion box. Our job as academic professionals is to make sure that our children are well-rounded in all of these skills that are needed. As I said earlier, science, maybe nine, eight, maybe eight through 12, maybe seven through 12. You can introduce science there. Social studies, seven through 12, maybe eight through 12. You can introduce it there. But in that earlier setting, do kids really need that social studies? Do we really need to spend 45 minutes, sometimes even a little bit longer on something that they're not going to retain and they're going to forget as soon as you give them that information? Or should we be focusing on something that's going to help them when mom and dad sends them on little errands to the store? Being able to count back change properly. Being able to read a receipt to make sure that I have all of my merchandise in my bag prior to leaving. Because once you leave the store, it's hard to go back in and say, oh, wait a minute, you forgot this. So this is why financial literacy is so important. And if we introduce it now, starting tomorrow or starting next academic school year, if we start putting that emphasis in play, guess what's going to happen? We're going to create the dynamic that we want, which is savvy, smart, intelligent, wise consumers that now know how to manage their money more effectively, more efficiently, and to be able to benefit liability or assets. And anybody who works in the business world could tell you, what, which one would you rather be, a liability or an asset? It's pretty simple. Even the words themselves, based on just their own understanding, not even their understanding, let me rephrase that, based on just the word itself. Liability, that sounds like something that I would never want to be, a liability. A liability, why would I want to be a liability? It doesn't sound like anything that's a positive. Asset, mm. man, that sounds like a real positive word. Oh, would you like to be an asset? That sounds like something that grows. Liability sounds like it's something that's subtracting, taking away. So yes, determine which one of these you want to be, liability or assets. Most of my kids in school, and again, I serve K through 12, primarily right now, K through 8, but they all know the difference, liability or asset. Most of my kids, if not all of them, want to be an asset because they know that it brings value. And when we're talking about financial literacy, it's going to bring value to your household. It's going to bring value to the understanding that this youth is going to need as they move and maneuver through the financial world. Super important. Now the government is putting emphasis, shouldn't we as parents? The government is putting emphasis on this, shouldn't we as parents? So in K through 12 education, Changes happen not just to how or where kids learn, but also to the specific content schools include in their curricula. Administrators, parents, and teachers currently are hotly debating whether money has a place in the common, uh, common core. And it does, or core curriculum, my apologies. And it does. It has a place. It has a place. Most kids, and I was just talking about it with my producer, most kids believe that, oh, money just comes from a machine. Mommy just goes to the machine and gets money out of it. That's how that's that that's their overall understanding of how money works. Oh, mommy or daddy just goes to the machine and money comes out. And then we go shopping. That's just a fraction of it. And we're leaving our kids so in the dirt, in the, in the dust behind when it comes to just, again, we can't even sit down and give them the basics of how we make our money. Or do we not know how we make our money? Do we not understand the tax liability that we are assessed? Not everything comes home. Some of that money, as we already know, is whoop, money's taken from it and you get what's left over. On one side of the argument, Critics wonder if teaching kids about money actually influences financial behavior. Let me tell you, it does. I've been doing a, a weekend Saturday course, and on a course myself, but I've been teaching a Saturday academy about financial literacy, and these kids are glued 
They're glued. They love it. They understand. They, they, they walk away with a better understanding. They're now looking at debit cards that are specific towards kids. They're now going home asking their parents, do we rent? Do we own? What's our credit score? They're now asking these parents, are you a liability or an asset? On the, other on the other side, educators, economists, and other researchers have, in fact, been able to de demonstrate the positive influence of teaching kids about money. Students in states with financial education curricula are more likely to save and less likely to pay credit card late fees, for instance, and they are also more likely to be banked. All right. Being banked means that you can go to any financial institution. They'll look at your financial literacy skills, pull up your information in their computers and go, wow. Yes, this is a client that we want to have. Now, obviously, being banked is not necessarily the saying that you're going to get the services and understanding from your financial institution. So be careful when you are bankable that your financial institution is also equally going to work for you because most of these financial institutions work against you because they don't give you enough in return on your investment. If you put something in your checking account, trust me when I tell you that little bit of money that they're giving you back yearly doesn't even add up, but yet they take every bit of what you have and they use it to build their coffers. So even though you're a banked person, you got to make sure that the relationship that you're getting into when it comes to your banking or your financial institution, it's also working for you. All right. Given the mounting evidence that financial education can have a positive influence on money behaviors and give that people and given that people often say that they wish they'd learned about money earlier, I believe, insisting that financial education receive the same level of support as traditional core subjects is a necess necess necessary and correct choice that can empower students for future success. One more time, I believe in, excuse me, I believe insisting that financial education receives the same level of support as traditional core subjects. The core subjects that I'm referring to is math. The other core subject that I'm referring to is language arts. The other core subject matters that I believe could be sidelined for maybe the first six years, maybe even the first seven years of academics so that we can get our kids to that understanding. And then that history, that social studies, those other science areas in which are important. I'm not minimizing education by no stretch of the imagination, but I'm saying, is it necessary at the earlier stages? Could it be something that we could do later on? Clearly, we can introduce them to our founding fathers. Clearly, we can introduce them to some of the common understandings of how this nation became a nation. But do we need to be putting so much of that emphasis in the first K through seven or even possibly eight? When they get into that eighth, maybe even the seventh, make their way to the eighth, ninth, tenth, as they move through the higher levels of that, I would say, second stage of academics. Clearly, once you're in college, different whole subject matter. But if we prepare them now, by the time they get college ready, they'll be ready for the working conditions. They'll be ready for the opportunities that are going to come with in that 11th grade when you're able to get that first job. In that 12th grade, if that's the time frame in which you want to now buy that first car. If you have the skills, I'm telling you, you'll probably be far more successful. You'll understand these are the important things that I need to start doing now. You'll be building savings. You'll be learning how to invest. You'll be learning how to diversify. You'll be understanding the terms that right now everyone seems to be freaking out about, which is inflation. And inflation is a monetary policy. That's what the government does. And the reason why inflation is so out of whack right now is because, again, $5.7 trillion was pumped into this economy. $5.7 trillion. And good, a good substantial amount went to poor people and those who were disenfranchised and so forth and so on. I can label, label a whole bunch of situations. But not all of it. A lot of it went to businesses that sat on that cash because they never needed it. Never needed it. They just took it just because. 
5.7. Think about that for a second, folks. It's a lot of money. 19 zeros are in trillions, okay? But inflation is nothing that we should be overly concerned with. Yes, it's hurting you when you go to the gas station. Yes, it's hurting you when you go to the grocery store. Yes, it's hurting you when you go to your favorite watering hole. Yes, it's hurting you when you have to buy kids clothing and things of that nature and accessories and things of that nature that come with all of that. It's hurting you there. That's why government needs to make sure that your wages are up. They need to make sure that every situation that you're getting into is being fully vetted prior to you getting into it. And if we have institutions like CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, if we have institutions like the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, then they should be doing their job to make sure that we as consumers are not getting taken advantage of. And unfortunately, we are. Because those two very institutions that I just mentioned have been feckless. They have not done per what we, the citizens, have entrusted them to do for us. It's just that simple. Yes, I'm calling them out. FTC, Federal Trade Commission. Yes, I'm calling them out. CFPB, Consumer Financial Protections Bureau. Anytime any one of those want to join me on the show and tell me about their practice and policies, which I've read up more than enough, I'm finding out that you guys do not do what you say you're going to do. You do not. You do not. You do not. So I'm going to leave it right there because I don't want to get off on a tangent. I want to focus on making sure that our kids have the proper understanding when it comes to their financial literacy. All right, so a shift towards governmental financial literacy support. Schools generally have been forced to push financial literacy to the back burner and treat it as a non-essential. Schools have been forced. Why? Why would you not want your students to understand about the importance of money? Why would you not want to make sure that your K through 12 has an understanding about money as they try to meet other standards? with the little money they have as they try to meet the other standards with the little money they have. Some of the textbooks that I've looked at over the course of my academics career have not been very ple pleasant or pleasing to the eye. Missing pages, missing covers, really? When a lot of what you can do as I do, is you can get the information right online. A lot of my kids, when I'm teaching, I do a lot of integrating with technology. In 21 states, schools integrated financial coursework into another class. Just seven states require schools to offer a standalone financial class. Seven of the 21. There's 52 states. Or 50 states, my apology. I keep saying 52 for some strange reason. There's 50 states. There's 50 states. And only 21 of them have integrated some form of financial literacy coursework in another class. And only seven of them have a standalone. Legislators in 25 states and the District of Columbia introduced financial education bills during the 2022 legislative session. The momentum grew out of the new emphasis on the need for money guidance brought to light by the economic hardship caused by COVID-19. The momentum was already there. COVID-19, all it did was pull back the covers. Oh, my God, look at all this dirt underneath here. Pull back the rugs. Oh, my God, look at all these situations we got underneath these rugs. Oh, my God, it opened up the closets and skeletons just fell all over people. They didn't need COVID-19 to highlight it even more. They were already there prior to. All COVID-19 did was make it highlight it more. It shined the brightest spotlight that we ever could possibly shine, shined it right on it. And prior to that, if you think about when the other guy was the president, when they shut down the economy, or excuse me, when they shut down the government and found out for about a month or two that even those who were working for the government had financial issues that they themselves didn't realize until that paycheck stopped coming in. Financial literacy, financial education is 
so important and it needs to be emphasized in every single one of our states, every single one of our schools, every single one of our colleges, every single one of our businesses, everyone who understands that their finance is okay should be making sure if you are a business owner that every single one of your employees' finances is equally okay. If you are a legislator, you should equally make sure that your state has a curriculum that focuses and emphasizes. I can tell you right now, if we did that, a lot of these social programs that we currently have that are not working, we'll be able to offset those resources and put them to better use. But you got to want it more than those who are presenting it to you. It's just that simple. Because once you do, I'm telling you, I'm telling you as I know myself as the individuals that I've been able to help over my 20 some odd years of helping and assisting individuals with financial needs, with financial literacy, it's paying off. And if we do this now, if we make sure while we're dealing with Roe v. Way, if we add this right to it, because again, Roe v. Way is a very important piece to financial literacy. You might not think it is, but it is very important. Why? Because who are the primary shoppers who are the primary individuals that are controlling those purses which are women so there is some connection the connection is how do we build off of that the new governmental emphasis on including financial literacy in k-12 through education demonstrates a rise recognize uh, a rising recognition of the benefits researchers have already demonstrated Nevertheless, the nation still faces large hurdles. These issues such as skyrocketing rent and student loan debt can create serious budget gaps for individuals and families. Providing foundational protections against these additional concerns likely will improve the effectiveness and subsequently financial literacy curricula within public education. So there's some pluses. There are huge pluses to financial literacy in K through 12 platforms. Huge pluses. Our kids deserve bright futures. It's just that simple. If you don't believe that your kid deserves a bright future, that's perfectly fine. But all our kids deserve a bright future. I really, me personally, African-American, Hispanic, Asian, white, Middle Eastern, it doesn't matter. Um, our Native Americans, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It needs to be taught throughout the demographics of our society. It doesn't matter. We are a nation of immigrants and every single last one of us should have an understanding of how our money works. Because if it's not working for you, I can tell you right now, it's working for Walmart. It's working for Target. It's working for those high-end stores. It's working so well for Elon Musk. It's working extremely well for Jeff Bezos. It's working very good for Microsoft. It's working exceptionally for Apple. And why is it not working for you? They're using the same methodology. They do have more of the resources, no question. But how are they getting more of the resources? Oh, they're getting it from us, the consumer. Hmm. Maybe I don't need to go out and get that next new iPhone. Maybe I should hold on to the one that I have and build a little bit off of that by using it to maybe maintain a, a, a proper understanding about how I'm budgeting. So when students leave schools, they're faced with a range of financial tasks, such as reading a paycheck, opening financial accounts, creating and maintaining a budget, and understanding credit. Without financial education, it's harder to, main to manage these responsibilities, which can harm credit scores. Bottom line, harm credit scores. So if we taught this earlier, the harm to your credit score would be almost non-existent. Those lower scores can translate into serious uh, difficulties, which getting a mortgage or even getting hired for work. Now, the work piece has been reduced, but I'm going to tell you why it's only been reduced. The government says they should not be asking you about your finances when it comes to your workplace. It's not one of those qualifiers. 
But if they have the question on the application, again, if you choose to omit that question, don't be surprised if you don't get that call back. So the catch 22 there. As a result, overall money goals can, uh, can get further and further out of reach. Wages. If, you, if you're not receiving a livable wage, then it's going to be hard to manage your living expenses. So at least, at, at least give me something that I can live on because these minimum settings are not doing it. Yes, New York and neighboring communities have raised their minimum wage to $15. But if you were serious, New York, if you were serious, other neighboring communities, $15 is just a small little piece. We technically should be somewhere by $33 to $38 an hour. We're still nowhere near where we should be. And if you're getting paid $15 an hour and your rent is $12, or it's gonna be $18 a square foot, you're still $3 shy. So you're not gonna be able to meet, make ends meet. You're not. And in order for you to live above your means, you have to be able to make sure that your means have been met. Financial literacy will make that happen. Even if you are someone making the modest amount of money, financial literacy will allow for you to stretch that out. It will allow for you to get products that you can allocate certain understandings to. Credit is a trajectory that should always be going up. If you're on this ebb and flow or this roller coaster that's going up and down, that's not what credit's all about. Credit should always be going in an upward trajectory. And the reason why we get stuck in these ebbs and flows is because the credit monitoring system is not effectively, nor are they efficiently, adequately making sure that the information that you are giving to them or the information that they receive from financial institutions is 100% valid. Okay, there's a lot of information that we don't know, that we must know prior to getting into any financial relationship with any of these institutions. Because if you make a mistake, they're gonna hold it against you and they're gonna hold it against you so hard that it's almost gonna be impossible to make financial moves in a positive. Again, going right back to that liability or asset. Which one are you going to be? Educators also have to acknowledge that finances is a dynamic subject that, that not all approach to financial education will have the same level of effectiveness. Today's kids need a lot of money knowledge that's not covered in standard financial courses. For example, they need to know about peer-to-peer -peer payment apps and factors of a cashless society. New apps like Zelle and Cash App are constantly emerging and changing expectations and capabilities. And these are good understandings. If I can send someone money real quick without having to go to the bank and get hit with all kinds of fees or doing a wire transaction or whatever the situations were prior to these new apps, and there's also a host of new credit products that allow for you as equally as well to build your finances, build that credit into an area that's going to help you get to, again, that next level, that next level of where am I financially? Am I good? Am I bad? Am I a liability or am I a asset? All right. For financial literacy to work, it must move away from lectures and one-off courses in favor of more thought digitally inclusive and continuous lessons over time. It must be something that is continuous day in, day out, day in, day out, on a constant basis that allows for you to pick up that new material, get that new understanding and apply it almost immediately. Knowing about George Washington is good, but do I need to apply that to anything? other than a test that might come up the next Friday after we go over the subject matter? Knowing about Abraham Lincoln, do I need to apply that immediately? Or is it something that I might only see on a test here or there? Now, if I'm going to be a history major and I'm going to follow that as I move through my higher education, then yes, then that's, in, that's when it's important. But if you're not going to be a history major and you're definitely not going to be one starting from K up to eighth grade, no, I think we should then move and steer or gear our financial understanding to what we've just mentioned here, to a consistent, 
including digital, and making it lessons over time. It also must be interactive and provide hands-on practice opportunities within a safe, consequent, free environment. Again, listen, listen, listen to that. It also must be interactive and provide hands-on practice opportunities within a safe, consequent, free environment. That's what we're doing. Number one reason for schools were not to educate at first. The number one reason for schools were to house all of these kids together so that moms and pops could go to work. It was to keep our kids, what's that word right there? Safe. It was to keep our little babies, what's that word right there? Safe. Prior to any academics being taught. And then they figured, well, wait a minute, we got all these kids, different ages, different varieties, different ethnicities, difference of everything that you possibly can think of. We're keeping them safe. Why don't we start teaching them some basics? A, B, C's, one, two, threes. Now to that basics that was way back when, let's start adding some financial literacy. Let's start adding those elements that are going to allow for our children to, again, get to that next level. All right, offering kids the import the information that they need to be financially secure improves the odds that they can claim the bright future they deserve. Schools do their best service when they not only teach evergreen course finance concept, but also monitor the market and integrate new financial developments in real time. I'm a day trader. I'm someone who loves that element of it's not for everybody there's a lot of risk management that you have to know about i'm someone who also trades on a regular basis i'm someone who has great mentors like dr yana b if you don't know who she is please soul city network definitely access wealth nation that's someone that again i'm just the credit guy i'm someone who specifically focuses the majority of their attention when it comes to financial products and services i focus a majority of my attention towards credit but I know people who, again, are superior, are excellent in their fields of study. And Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse is someone that not only can I rely on and depend on, but it's someone that I can easily turn a individual that has already gone through the credit piece. And now they're ready to start moving that into that better understanding, which is insurance, which is life insurance, which is auto. All of the particulars that come with that, wills. All of the things that you are going to need to keep that finances intact as you go through your life. And Dr. Yana B is one of those individuals that can help you out. So if you're ever in need, please do not hesitate. Soul City Network, she has a great show that's also on this network. It's called Access Wealth Nation. Thursdays, or excuse me, Wednesdays at six o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it is. Wednesdays at six o'clock. Same time frame, just on a different day. But definitely tune into that show as well. Knowledge is power. It's power. And the more knowledge we have, the more power we will also equally have. All right, so what's changing? Educational standards largely have been set by individual states in the past, in part because local communities want to be able to control curricula according to the relevant need they see in their own backyards. They hold true today despite federal levels in uh, efforts such as Common Core. One of the biggest issues in financial literacy subsequently is a lack of standards across the nation. Standards. Standards. CFPB, supposed to have standards, but they don't. Equifax TransUnion Experience, supposed to have standards, but they don't. They write down these little things that they are supposed to hold themselves to, but they don't follow it. Once we have concrete standards about how we're going to teach financial literacy, which is so easy to achieve, you just got to find people like myself, people who don't mind, who've spent a large amount of their life figuring out how do we best serve our youth. I worked for corporate America for 30 plus years. Oh, trust me when I tell you. Corporate America and I, we didn't leave each other. The relationship wasn't working. 
in a relationship that doesn't work, you do not stay. You find alternatives. And one of the alternatives was, was to say, thank you, corporate America, for all the knowledge and the understanding, but I have to expose you. I have to put you out there. I have to tell everybody about your malfeasance, how you're not really helping your worker, how you're putting your worker in more of harm's way. So again, the lack of standards is problematic because it can mean students don't achieve the same level of financial preparedness. And teachers cannot easily create a shared lesson material for one location to another. Progress on financial education is slow. And why is it slow? Why? We've been around forever. People have been around forever. So why is financial education so slow? Well, it's slow because it's the will to want to versus the will to not. And too many of us in our country have the will not to want to make sure that everybody is financially prepared for their life. Sad to have to say it. Congress isn't prepared for financial literacy. They keep reevaluating. Oh, we got to study. We got to look into. No, you don't. Maxine Waters, you don't have to look into anything anymore. The financial committees, both in the House and in the Senate, you don't have to look at these understandings anymore. You have to give up the resources so that people like myself, educators like myself, can be inside of our academic settings to help with making sure that our kids are financially prepared. That's all it is. Real simple, real easy. The number of states integrating financial content into another class currently, as we said, 21, has risen by four since 2018. Only four. So that means it was 18 and it rose to um, 21. State level mandates are improving understandings for topics such as student loans. Yes, student loans, that number one thing that Biden is working on trying to reduce for individuals. Me personally, 50,000 is a joke. That's again, just me personally. They lied. I'm going to put it right out there. Whenever you take opportunities and you shift those opportunities to a whole new country, you take away the manufacturing. What do we produce in this country anymore? Besides uh, that, 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 that phone cup thing that's always uh, on the commercial. What do we really produce in, the, in our country? What? Please drop me a comment. If anybody has anything that we produce in our country, please put it in the comment section. I don't think we produce that much. There isn't really much that says made in America. I work for Universal Studios. A good percentage of the merchandise that we brought in said made in China. I lived in California, so it was Disney World, if I'm not, no, excuse me, Disneyland or Universal Studios, which is on both coasts. But again, when you went to those places, if you pulled up the tag in the back, it probably said made in Hong Kong, made in China made in Bangladesh, made in all of these foreign countries. But if you live on the West Coast and all of your stuff says, and meaning you're traveling from Asian communities and coming into California, why would you want to purchase something that you can purchase right at your own home that says made in your own country? I hope you're understanding where I'm going with this. Made in America has always had a positive standing across the globe. So why did we stop? Well, the only reason why we stopped is because we got greedy. 1983, Ronald Reagan, 1983, Ronald Reagan, when he deregulated the economy, allowed for businesses to move all of their intellectual properties off of our land and onto other lands, but still capitalize on all the tax benefits. No. Great for those other countries, allowed for their workers to make money, which is understandable. We don't want anybody across the globe not to be able to have the same fortitude that we have here in America. But student loans, I'm sorry, Joe Biden, the administration, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, all of you who are always touting and, and blowing the whistles about, oh, student loan, student loan, student loan, student loan, wipe them all off. Every last dime. Rich people who are thinking, well, I've worked and I paid my student loans. Yeah, you sure did. You did a great job too. But somebody was there to make sure that that all got taken care of. You got your job through somebody else. Not about what you know, about who you knew was the circumstances. Black and brown didn't have it so favorably. 
We took on these student loans thinking that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were going to take care of us, but they didn't. They ended up selling it off to Navient. Navient then doubled and tripled and quadrupled some of these interest rates. Locked consumers and students back into a setting that they themselves were not fully versed in. And if I know that, I mean, not I, I thank God. Again, I went to school in Europe. My uh, uh, student loan understanding was the big donut. Nothing, zero. I was very fortunate, very lucky. All right. So there's a lot more that we can talk about when it comes to that student loan, but that's something that we'll do on another day. But I just want you to understand student loans. If you are taking them on, please understand your contractual obligation. If you are already in them, please make sure that you have deferred your student loans because there are going to be some surprises coming down the pipeline. Please make sure that equally you understand it. And if you don't, please reach out to companies like this one. Please reach out to shows like this one because we can help you navigate through whatever financial issue that might be coming your way. Okay. It's just that simple. Digital financial literacy is more front and center too. Professional or uh, professionals recognize the growth of fintech. There is increased interest in how factors like income, higher education access, and geography all contribute to digital finance adopted and literacy. Adoptions and literacy, my apologies. It's really that simple. It's not that hard. Leaders have to improve their area to ensure students get the most out of classes. Even so, financial literacy has little part and opportunity, uh, excuse me, opposition. There are also nonprofit organizations that can help address costs. So the will to want to versus the will to not. The will to want to versus the will to not. And clearly in this country, we do not have the will to want to. We have the will to say, oh, no, we got to reevaluate. Oh, no, we got to do more study. No, we don't. No, we don't. The information and the technology is all there. All we have to do is want to implement it into our day-to-day -day understanding for our K through 12. It's just that simple. All right, grassroots efforts can make a difference as well. In the past, financial literacy has been pushed aside within K-12 schools. Again, there has been a lack of agreement about how and what to teach. Critics also legitimately point out that people can't budget their way through problems like poor social infrastructure and biases. Even so, readers have evidence that financial education makes a difference because financial education prepares students for the virtue of the reality they'll face in the real world and contributes directly to their financial success. I believe it deserves to hold the same, again, the same priority as any other K through 12 subject. Getting money taught in school on a more subsidized national level can start tomorrow. And I wouldn't mind if it started tonight through simple grassroots efforts. Just that simple, just that easy, just that simple, just that easy. We have more than enough experts. We have enough talented, bright, skilled individuals that could step in on day one and start getting success on day one. All right, here's some financial products that I want you to, again, if you have the time, jot these down. If not, let me know. Send me a comment in the comment section. Be more than happy to share these with you. These are top nine uh, credit building products that you can use to start getting that financial literacy understanding for your K through 12 and also equally for yourself. Here's the best overall, the best overall product, Green Light, Kids Debit Card. That's the best overall product. Please go look up green light, find out some of their pros and their cons because each one of these has pros and cons. See which one works and fits to your understanding. Get your kids involved in those day-to-day -day 
credit transactions, those swiping of the cards, making sure that they understand what is a debit card, what's a credit card, what's a savings account. If you do that now, I'm telling you, your children are going to thank you when, when they're able to and are already out there doing those basics. Best of no fees. This one has almost no fees. Axios or Axos. Banking, first checking account, and debit card. Best for spending controls. Busy kid. I was talking to it. Well, I was talking about this one with one of my kids on the Saturday Academy. Great, great product. $3.99, if I'm not mistaken, less than three. I think it was $3.49 a month. Had a lot of good qualities about it. A plus, get our kids already invited and, and invite them in to sit down with you and go over these products and services that you are eventually and you should be using today. Best customer service. Go, Henry. It's always good to know that we have a partner, a willing partner that doesn't mind taking the time to explain and go over every bit of their products. Best security for the future. Jasby is a virtual debit card. Best financial education, far, uh, farm, farm zoo. Okay, these are all prepaid. Some of them are directly where you add the money to, prepaid in um, how you add your money. They have different understandings. So again, prepaid, very good for your child. Also debit cards, again, very good for your child. For you, not so necessarily because we want you to start focusing on the credit building piece. But to get your children introduced to this piece, oh my God, every bit of necessary. Best of another one, no fee. Best parental control, Kachinga. And finally, but not least, best financial planning, the current debt card for teens, a current debt card for teens. All right, so we have a lot of products. This is just a, the top nine that I was able to locate on a variety, again, a variety of different websites. As I said last time on our show, we search, scour, double check, triple check to make sure that the information that we're providing to you is on point no matter what. We Make sure that all of our recommendations are exactly that. They're just recommendations. You can choose and do whatever you want. You want to go out and get a second, third, fourth opinion. That's perfectly fine. These are all just recommendations. But I tell you right now, if you do just a small fraction of what we're recommending, your financial future is going to change and it's going to change for the better. All because you decided to take these simple, basic steps. Introducing financial literacy in the household. That's a basic, simple step. Taking your kids with you when you go to the supermarket and the grocery stores, allowing them to equally go out and do some of their own purchasing, getting them involved in some of these financial building block products. It's only going to help. It's only going to make that student. It's only going to make that child. It's only going to make that individual more prepared for the reality of what is to be faced. Rent. Utilities, car payments, insurance payments, all of the things that we're doing now, let's prepare our children for the inevitable. They're going to grow up, and we hope that they live a very healthy and wealthy life without any of these obstacles and pitfalls that we had to subject ourselves to. And final verdict, there are a wide variety of teen, <clears throat> of teen debit cards available, with many of them offering mobile apps for seamless digital money management. Most, credit, excuse me, most cards offer parental controls, but some offer more features than others. Companies like Current, Kachinga, and Greenlight allow parents to monitor and control spending options lock cards and set up real-time parental notifications so that they are so excuse me so they are a great options for parents for younger teens who are just getting started with money management so that in itself should tell you everything that you need to know let's get our children involved let's get our children on point 
Thank you so much, Brother Rob. I so appreciate seeing you on my shows. It's always a great pleasure. Brother Rob and I will be hosting the Juneteenth event coming up. He is one of my mentors, and I appreciate his input so dearly. So thank you so much, Brother Rob. I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, content that we were providing today. Do you have any questions, anyone? We have roughly about five more minutes. Any questions? If you don't have any questions, or if you do, send it to us. We hope you learn something new today. It's always important to make sure that you walk away with a good understanding as to how your finances are going to help you. It's not about helping me. It's not about helping your neighbor. It's not about helping uh, um, anyone, to be honest with you. But it's about getting the knowledge that you yourself can apply immediately and then passing that knowledge on to those in your household first, then take it to your workplace, then take it to your social gathering spots. Make sure that we as a community are doing exactly as we need, because I'm telling you, in the next three years, we're going to see some dynamic changes. One of them are going to happen in the midterms. All depends on whether we keep the Senate, meaning not we all depends on whether the Democrats keep the Senate and the House. They're clearly going to keep the, the, the White House. There's no getting around that. There's no way of instilling Trump back into the White House. It's not going to happen. Or the other guy. It's not going to happen. But what we can do is make sure that when we get out there and vote, that we vote with our conscience, that we vote and know who's on these ballots, that we vote from the top to the bottom, that we make sure even the dog catcher, we know the dog catchers. The races are going to happen in states. And if we take care of our states, what happens in that federal area will also equally be taken care of. The vote this time around is super important. This midterm, as well as that general that's going to be coming up in 2024. We have no time to play. We have no time to waste. Before we know it, 2024 is going to be knocking at the door. It's going to be right here. Let's do what we need to do. Let's do it now. And finally, as always, thank you so much, everybody, for giving me the time for you being part of our Tuesday events. We appreciate you. We love you. We adore you. To find us, please, Leverage Credit Recovery contact information, phone number 805-428-9424. Send me that email Send or send me a text real quick if you have a quick question. Send, call me up. I'm available from 4.30 or 5 o'clock until 1 a.m. every single night that West Coast individuals that also equally have situations that they want addressed. Email leveragecreditrecovery at gmail.com. Okay, we have also another one that's primarily for our credit consumers that really have and ready to get started. Credit coach 411 at gmail also equally.com. And the website leveragecreditrecovery.com. You can set up an appointment. You can meet the CEO. You can pose general questions. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want. You can find us on a variety of the social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Yes, we are making sure that we're reaching across the spectrums. We want everybody to understand your financial literacy depends on what you do because we're doing our part. And our part is to make sure that you are well informed. Our part is to make sure that you are savvy. Our part is to make sure that you are a asset versus being a liability. And as always, folks, it is a pleasure. I thank you for making the time. Again, my name is Tyrone Glover. I am the Dress Down CEO of Leverage Credit Recovery. I can't thank you enough for, again, making the time, being here, being present for everyone. This is always one of my most exciting days because as I said before, I get to go to school, I get to spend it with my K through eight. And then after that, I get prepared for this exciting part of the day, which is seeing you, that potential client, that in need individual of all of these valuable resources. Take them, apply them. And if you still have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. As always, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for watching. Be safe, America. We love you.